Am I the jerk for laughing when my sibling's partner told me their dog is vegetarian? We had a Memorial Day cookout at our family cabin this past Sunday. My younger brother Joe brought his girlfriend Amy, who he has been with for about 18 months. Joe had previously asked if it was okay if Amy brought her dog. We are a very dog-friendly family, so that was fine. My family has a dog, and my cousin has one as well. When Joe and Amy arrived, I was just about to feed my dog, and Amy asked if I could do that somewhere else because she did not want her dog to eat different food due to its diet. I thought that was a little weird but wanted to accommodate our guest, so I took my dog to the garage to feed him quickly. Later, I was playing fetch with my dog and my cousin's dog and was going to give them treats afterward. I asked Amy if she wanted me to grab one for her dog. She said no, and I did not press further. We cooked up hot dogs and burgers, and I tossed my dog the last bite of my hot dog. When I did that, Amy asked me if I thought that was a good idea because of all the junk that is in a hot dog. I joke that I have seen my dog eat things way worse than hot dogs all on his own, so I am not too worried about a small bite of a hot dog. She said that all the chemicals and processed stuff in hot dogs are not good for dogs and that she feeds her dog an all-natural, organic diet. I told her I had never heard of that for dogs and asked what she feeds her dog. She said that her dog is a vegetarian, so she does not give it any meat-based foods or treats. I thought she was joking and started laughing, but she was dead serious. Joe chimed in to say that it is true. The dog refuses to eat meat of any kind. I said that this must be some kind of joke because no dog is vegetarian. Amy got defensive and said that her dog has always been a vegetarian and will turn its nose up at any meat-based item. I told her that she is lying to herself if she thinks that is true and that her dog would 100% eat a hot dog out of my hand right now if I let it. I told her that her dog needs meat and protein in its diet and that she is the one forcing her dog to eat a vegetarian diet. The dog is not choosing that for itself. She said that at least she does not give her dog ultra-processed things like hot dogs, and I told her that at least I allow my dog to be a dog, and that I would never deprive a dog of its primary source of protein, which is meat. I said that dogs did not evolve to be vegetarians, and that she can feed her dog whatever she wants, but she should at least own up to the fact that she is forcing her dog to have that diet. The dog is not choosing that. Joe and Amy left right after they finished eating, barely saying goodbye. I later got a text from Joe that I was being an asshole to Amy about her dog. I told him that the only asshole I saw was a dog owner who was forcing their dog into having a diet that it is not meant to have. Dogs are technically omnivores and can thrive on a largely vegetarian diet with the right vet-approved foods. However, these diets can be expensive and are often chosen based on the owner's preferences rather than the dog's. Pets will typically eat what they're given, but that doesn't mean they're naturally inclined to those choices. It's an example of how people sometimes impose their lifestyles on their pets, regardless of whether it truly benefits them. Am I the jerk for not caring if my adopted sibling feels included? I, a 23-year-old female, have a biological brother who is 24 years old and an adopted sister who is 27 years old. She was adopted when I was a year old and she was around 4 years old. For most of my life, my sister received all the attention from our parents and my brother and I were just there. My parents would bend over backwards to make sure she felt like a part of the family, which is great, except they didn't bother to make my brother and me feel included. When she was 19 years old we found her biological family and they have a great relationship now. But I feel like this completely ruined our own family dynamic. Our father died 5 years ago and it seems like she just moved on from our father to the other father. She is also slowly moving on from our family to her biological family. Her biological mother's side also seems to have a problem with us because we are white and my sister is black. Every time we try to be involved in activities, there are always jabs at us, and I think they encourage her to become distant from us. My mother still acts like my sister is the center of our world. The last two Thanksgivings we had to have family Thanksgiving dinner days before, because my sister was going to have Thanksgiving with her biological family. The same situation happened for the previous Christmas. We exchanged gifts by the 20th and my sister didn't even bring my nephew as he was at his biological grandmother's. My final straw has been a trip we had been planning in honor of my father. On the five-year anniversary of his passing, we were going to plant an orchard in a certain African country. My father worked and lived in for years and we visited many times. Planting this was something my father had planned before he died and had it planned to a T, so we would only be executing his plan. We had agreed that the five-year anniversary felt like the perfect time. Except now my sister's biological sister will be getting married around the same time, not the same day. But it means my sister can only join us after the actual anniversary day. My mother says it's okay, we can plant the trees a week or two later. She actually said that when we plant the trees doesn't make much difference, we'll still be honoring him. She also said that my sister will only ever get to attend her sister's wedding once. She says it's a week's worth of work anyway, so it's not like we were going to be done on the actual day. This made me mad, and I have told them I will be breaking the ground on the actual anniversary day with or without any of them. She said I was being inconsiderate and that I should think about how this will make my sister feel like she doesn't matter to the family. My sister has been part of our family the same amount of time I have been. 
only she can exclude herself. My brother keeps flip-flopping between coming with me to be there for the anniversary or waiting for my mother and sister some days later, and I honestly can't blame him. Am I the asshole for insisting I am not waiting on anyone? The trip is in two months. This isn't just about her going to a wedding and joining the rest of you later, it's about your mom trying to make all of you postpone despite the significance of the planned start date. Go on a scheduled and plant the orchard. Even if you start alone, it'll be good for you to have some time with the memory of your dad, to grieve and process in peace. Stop arguing with your mom and brother, it's pointless. Control the one thing you can control, your presence. Maybe consider putting some distance between you, your mom and sister if things don't improve, and focus on making your friends your new family. Am I the jerk for not spilling McDonald's in my car and turning off the Wi-Fi phone service at my mom's house? I was out with my mother, driving around in my car with my little cousin in the back seat. I had gotten us all McDonald's. Since my cousin is young and unable to feed himself, I took the time to feed him from the front passenger seat. During this time, I placed my uneaten meal onto the dashboard in front of me. My mother, the driver, said nothing about it. An hour later, my mother was still driving. We were exiting a parking lot at a restaurant. She made a quick sharp turn out of the parking lot, pushing the remnants of my McDonald's in the bag, off the dashboard and into my lap. Nothing fell from the bag and nothing spilled. It seemed totally fine, right? The first words out of her mouth were, you did this to me, although what exactly I did is still unclear to me. Following that was a 45 minute rant from her as we drove home, picking at every aspect of my life like I'm some rat to dissect and dispose of. I tried to cut in several times to say how that made me feel, only to be met by responses such as, well, how do you think I feel? And so, I gave up everything to care for you, which only furthered my discomfort. Not to mention my cousin in her car seat had to witness all the onslaught. A month later my mother kicked me out. The last words she spoke to me were, I don't love you anymore, don't come back. I took what I could and left immediately. She began to call and text threats. That's when I realized I still paid for the internet and phone service at her house. I had begun paying it around 18 to help support the household, even though I was in high school with two part-time jobs. But I didn't even live there anymore. So I went to the shop and got it cut off and refunded. My mother ended up getting her husband to pay for a new phone and upgraded Wi-Fi for the house, all while continuing to bash me in private and on social media. I started receiving texts from family members, asking why I terminated her service with no warning. A lot of them came at me for the illegal activity of turning her service off without warning. Let me be very clear, both bills and plans were 100% in my name and fully paid by me, and I still gave her a 48-hour heads up. So here I am now. Am I the asshole? Choices have consequences. She made her choice. Your mother said she doesn't love you anymore and kicked you out, and you're worried if you spilled McDonald's in her car. No, you are not the jerk. It's always sad when a family breaks apart like this, but in your case you did the right thing to preserve your own safety and mental health. Am I the jerk for telling my sibling that they have no idea what they're talking about because they aren't a parent? I, a 26-year-old male, have three children under the age of five, two four-year-old females and a two-year-old male, with a fourth child on the way. Before we had children, my wife and I had many ideas about the kind of parents we would be and were critical of people who parented in ways we disagreed with. However, as any parent knows, actually raising children is hard work and you will break your values. My brother, a 22-year-old male, is studying psychology with a few modules on child psychology and development. He regularly tells me that he thinks iPad kids are spoiled brats who will struggle developmentally and that they are the spawn of lazy, negligent parents. I wouldn't say my children are iPad kids, but they do have an iPad between the three of them and more screen time than I would ideally like. Sometimes, that's just how it goes. My brother also disapproves of the fact that we occasionally bribe our children with sweets and have lied to them. Every time he tells me his views on parenting, I just laugh and tell him to try being a parent. Then I'll take his advice. Recently, due to an emergency, my wife and I needed a babysitter for a whole day, so I called my brother. Despite his judgment, he is actually very good with our children. When we got home in the evening, the children were in bed after having had dinner, and we thanked him profusely. He very earnestly told us that, now he had experienced being a parent. He realized that not letting children use screens was very easy. They hadn't watched TV or used their iPad in the 12 hours he'd been there. He also said he'd calmed their fears, read to them, and hadn't had to bribe them with sweets. He claimed he had dealt with very calm, relaxed children, as opposed to the brats they normally are when they're with me. He gave us a 20-minute lecture about our bad parenting and said that now he was in a position to give advice, he was going to give it. We had been planning to give him 200 pounds sterling to thank him for helping us on short notice and looking after the children for so long, but we sent him on his way without any pay. The next day I called him to tell him I thought his behavior was incredibly inappropriate. I appreciated him looking after the children, but I said it was better if he didn't see them for a while. I told him that springing all that on us after a day of stress showed how immature he really was. I also told him that he didn't know anything about parenting because he wasn't a parent. I concede I may have gone too far, but my mother called me later to tell me my brother was crying. 
She called me a dickhead because he was just trying to help, and apparently, I'm a bad parent for dealing with people's kindness so rudely. My brother and parents are upset with me and not talking to me, so am I the asshole? He shouldn't be forcing advice and commentary on your parenting, especially when he should know from a psychological standpoint that children are better behaved with close adults who aren't parents. It's not your responsibility to educate him anyway, and you shouldn't feel like you have to. However, if you want to improve the relationship, it needs to start with a conversation where you discuss your children's behavior and explain why you do the things you do. The main thing is that everyone does their best, and it's important to communicate and understand each other's perspectives. I also don't necessarily agree with you limiting contact between him and the kids, the more time he spends with them, the more he will see that they are more than just what's in his textbooks. Am I the jerk for telling my parents they didn't give me and my siblings a good childhood? I am the middle child of my parents' three children together. I have an older sister who is 19 years old and a younger brother who is 15 years old. My mother has other children from a previous marriage, and they are in their 20s, with one being around 40 years old. I don't really remember the oldest one, but the others mostly lived with us when they were younger, and it was hell. My mother's ex-husband was a terrible person, and my parents created a very messy childhood for me and my two siblings. The police and child protective services made regular appearances in our lives because my mother's ex-husband called them on us several times. Sometimes they were called on him and would talk to my mother, father, or the other children. My mother's ex-husband was arrested from our home many times because he would show up uninvited, refuse to leave, and start trouble. Sometimes my mother's other children caused trouble, and the police had to get involved as well. They hated our father and us, and they would cheer on their father's antics. Our house was essentially a hell house. Three of the people living with us didn't want to be there, and my parents were so focused on rescuing my mother's other children from her ex-husband that they didn't spend time ensuring we were okay. My mother's ex-husband was horrible to us, but my sister got it worst of all. He made comments about her being ugly and fat, and was a total creep to her. We were bullied by this strange man and by people who were supposed to be our siblings. We used to be so afraid of him and seeing him around because of how he acted. To make it all worse, we always came last at home. My mother's other children were the priority, then my parents prioritized each other, and finally the three of us. The best part of my childhood was when we lived with our grandfather for about five weeks during a child protective services investigation. He gave us the love, support, and attention we missed out on at home. He also tried shielding us from the crazy situations. Our parents never did that. We had an up-close view of all the chaos. Even when the last of my mother's other children moved out, the focus was still mostly on them. We also saw them for Christmas every year, and they still hated us, so that was always fun. In the last year, things have been somewhat different. My parents now like to talk as if we're ungrateful because we're not close to them and don't share things with them. We don't have the typical parent-child relationship with them. None of us trust our parents. We go to our grandfather if we need an adult. My parents complain a lot about my sister having nothing to do with them after they believe they gave us all a good childhood. I've heard that a few times and last time, which was last week, I snapped and told my parents they didn't give us a good childhood. I told them to look back at how terrible things were and how they brought us into a huge mess. My parents called me a selfish, ungrateful child. My brother backed me up, but they were angry with me for saying that. They told me I didn't appreciate them trying their best. Am I the asshole? In my opinion, you have done nothing wrong here. Some parents can try their best but ultimately just aren't good at being parents, and the children have to deal with the results. Family therapy could be a good option if there's a desire to save the relationship. However, be careful when confronting them, as it might lead to anger directed at the one child they still have power over. Am I the jerk for naming my child after my mother-in-law? I'm very close to my mother-in-law, at Charline Tao. I met her when I was 12 years old, and she was more of a mother to me than my own mother was. Both my in-laws are great, and my father-in-law is more of a father to me than my own father is. My husband is very close to his mother as well. When my husband and I got married, my mother-in-law actually walked me down the aisle after my grandparents, who were supposed to do it, did not show up. She has been an amazing support to me in the 16 years that I have known her. As an adult, I am no contact with my parents and have lower contact with my grandparents since the wedding incident. The reason they did not show up is because I refused to invite my parents for appearances sake. When my husband and I found out we were expecting a baby, we had tossed around the idea of naming her after my mother-in-law. I wanted her name to be special and to have a story and real meaning behind it. My mother-in-law has a Rose name and she always wanted to be Rosie, but another nickname stuck when she was very young. We decided if we had a girl, we would name her Rosie. After finding out we were expecting a girl, Rosie became the firm choice. We told nobody about the name until we had her. My mother-in-law and father-in-law came to the hospital to meet her, which is when we told my mother-in-law as she was holding her namesake. She was so happy and my father-in-law was overjoyed for her. Not everyone loved it. My grandparents were angry when they heard about the name because I honored my mother-in-law and not one of my parents. My sister-in-law was also annoyed. She named both her children after our father-in-law, 
her daughter has the female version of his name, and her son has our father-in-law's middle name as a first name. My brother-in-law named his son after our father-in-law too. Our daughter is the first, and maybe only child, who will honor my mother-in-law. My sister-in-law feels like I did this to try to make her and my brother-in-law feel bad, and or to try to make my daughter the favorite for my mother-in-law. My husband said she was being ridiculous, and my mother-in-law was so upset when she found out what her daughter had said. The backlash surprised me, especially from my sister-in-law. She blamed me because she said if I hadn't been okay with it, my daughter wouldn't even have a family name. She told me I was being unkind to her, my brother-in-law, and the other grandchildren. Am I the asshole? I think you were not in the wrong here. What you did was sweet, and it's clear your mother-in-law is important to you. It's unfair that your sister-in-law twisted a happy moment, meant to honor your mother-in-law into something negative. They got to name their kids after your Phil, so it's perfectly reasonable for you to name yours after your mother-in-law. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.